1947, before there was a state of Israel, a holiday was declared throughout British-ruled Palestine. It was all because of a small steamship. As she approached Tel Aviv's tiny but bustling port, thousands of men and women, among them future leaders of Israel, began to cheer. For this ship symbolized the beginning of a new era. Once as the Keda, she was known as the Queen of the Malacca Straits, serving with the British Navy during World War II and the evacuation of Singapore and the invasion of Malaya. Now refitted and renamed Kedma, she became a symbol of hope and pride, a symbol of the future, and the first ship to fly the seven star flag, now known around the world as the symbol of Zim. Zim was incorporated in 1945 by the Jewish Agency, the Histadrut Labor Federation, and the Israel Maritime League. Its managers, led by Dr. Naftali Vidra, were people of vision, not seamen. The world was still reeling in the aftermath of World War II and the Holocaust. Following Israel's declaration of independence in 1948, many former leaders of the Aliyah Beit clandestine immigration movement joined the company, bringing their seafaring experience and a spirit of adventure. Zim faced the daunting challenge of bringing thousands of immigrants to Israel, despite the fact that almost no passenger ships were available. The company's early fleet included ships used for clandestine immigration, among them two former banana boats, Pan York and Pan Crescent, refitted by the Aliyah Beit movement to carry 13,000 immigrants. In fact, 15,000 people had been crammed on board, with just 40 centimeters of bunk space for each. These ships, the largest used during clandestine immigration, had been detained in Cyprus. After Israel's declaration of statehood, they were released, joining the Zim fleet as Atzma'ut and Komemiut, independence and statehood. Zim purchased more old passenger ships, Negba, Artsa, and Galila, which brought the first released detainees from Cyprus to Israel. In 1949 alone, Zim ships brought in more than 100,000 immigrants. During Israel's War of Independence in 1948, Zim ships carried precious supplies as well as arms and ammunition to ensure the survival of the young state. Zim played this crucial role every time Israel faced conflict. No matter how daunting or dangerous the mission, Zim was always there. In 1953, Zim began an era of expansion that would establish its global presence. In a stormy debate, the Knesset, Israel's parliament, decided to accept war reparations from Germany. At first, Zim was offered only two cargo vessels, but by the time the program ended, Zim had acquired 36 passenger, cargo, bulk carrier, and tanker ships. They were not really a gift. Zim eventually paid for each vessel from its operating income, an impressive achievement for the young company. Launching new ships became a regular event, the newly expanded fleet enabled Zim to grow and achieve impressive business gains. Along with cargo lines, the 50s and early 60s were the heyday of passenger ships. Zim offered services throughout the Mediterranean, to and from the Americas, as well as winter cruises in the Caribbean. Ships named Israel, Zion, Yerushalayim, Theodore Herzl, Moledet, and Shalom, the modern luxurious flagship of the fleet, were floating ambassadors for Israel. For Jewish communities abroad, they were symbols of a vibrant nation. In Israel, Zim became a household name, with its ships featured in children's books, songs, and films. By the late 60s, increased air travel and shrinking passenger demand led to mounting losses. Zim's management, led by Mayor Giron, made the painful but necessary decision to end passenger service. The era of splendid white ocean liners slipped into memory. In 1969, the Israel Corporation acquired about half of Zim's shares. Israel's government and other smaller investors held the rest. In 1970, as it celebrated its 25th anniversary, Zim owned 77 ships and chartered another 70, plying 19 major routes and carrying some 4.3 million tons of cargo. In 1970, Zim management took a bold decision that would change the face of the company. 
New technology was revolutionizing world shipping. Instead of loading ships with various cargoes, goods were stowed in standard-sized containers, leading to increased efficiency, lower handling costs, and shorter times in port. Zim was among the pioneers in container shipping. The meticulously planned operation spearheaded by Zim President Moshe Kashti marked the transition into this modern era. Six specialized container ships were ordered from Italy and Germany, together with containers and shore equipment. After Kashti's untimely death, Yuda Rotem took over as president and continued the drive toward containerization, establishing additional container lines and subsidiaries, positioning Zim to meet the challenges of modern shipping. In May 1972, Zim introduced its three-continent line, known today as ZCS, Zim Container Service. This route was one of the first of its kind, with ships sailing from the Mediterranean to the Far East and back, calling at ports in Asia, America, and Europe, a voyage of more than 100 days. Another major field of operations was the deployment of tankers carrying crude oil from Iran to Israel and finished goods from Israel to Europe. 1973, the Yom Kippur War. Foreign vessels were reluctant to call on Israeli ports. Zim chartered extra ships and paid additional insurance premiums. Its fleet carried crucial food and goods, including vital military equipment, to Israel. At the same time, for Zim customers around the world, it was business as usual. The sea is unpredictable, and Zim ships have faced fierce storms wherever they sailed. In 1981, despite its enviable safety record, the bulk carrier Mitsada was lost in a storm near Bermuda. Search and rescue teams, hampered by poor weather, managed to rescue 11 survivors. 24 crew members, including the Mitsada's captain, perished in the tragedy. In the early 80s, Zim had to contend with one of the gravest crises in the history of global shipping. The company's solid foundation, diversification, and global deployment helped it weather the storm. President and CEO Matty Morgenstern, appointed in 1984, implemented a recovery plan which helped rally the company, bringing Zim back quickly to efficiency and profitability. It was the beginning of a new era. By the late 80s, Zim embarked on a massive fleet renovation and expansion project. From 1990 to 1997, it built 15 modern ships, enabling Zim to offer a weekly fixed day sailing schedule and maintaining its position among the world's top ranked shipping companies. In early 1997, during another global shipping crisis, Dr. Yoram Zeba was appointed president and chief executive officer and launched a new drive for increased efficiency. In 1998, Zim decided on a growth strategy that would expand its activities in Pacific and Asian trade. Thirteen new container ships of 5,000 TEU each joined the fleet. Within two years, Zim's carriage capacity increased by 50%. In April 1999, the Ofer Brothers Group became the major shareholder in the Israel Corporation, and Udi Angel was appointed chairman of the board of Zim. In February 2004, privatization of the company was completed when the Israel Corporation purchased the government shares in Zim. This was a major turning point in the history of Zim. As a private company, it sailed on an ocean of new possibilities. New ships built in Korea joined the fleet. Cutting-edge computerized systems enhanced financial efficiency. Activities in shipping-related fields gained new momentum. In late 2004, Doron Goder was appointed president and CEO of Zim. In February 2005, Idan Ofer was named chairman of its board of directors. Today, Zim is one of the largest container shipping companies in the world. It operates an elaborate network with eight global services and more than 40 regional lines covering all major trade routes. 
Sim strives to expand its shipping-related activities in order to realize the concept of controlling the supply chain. Today, Zim customers can send any cargo to any destination by sea, land, or air. Zim's sound infrastructure includes offices and facilities around the world. A sophisticated global computer system assists in managing the fleet, tracking each shipment, and boosting efficiency. The company's internet site provides customers with online, updated information. This complex system is overseen by a staff of experienced professionals, the human resources who have always stood behind Zim's success. Zim will continue to expand and diversify its services while penetrating new markets, focused on growth and strength in all global trade routes. Since the days of the Kedma, Zim Seven Stars have been a trusted symbol of service, reliability, and stability. For 60 years, Zim ships have left a proud tradition of achievement in their wake. But this is just the beginning. With each new day, Zim sets sail again, headed toward new horizons.